What's up guys? Hey, how are we doing? So it's an off week, actually two weeks off, but there will be plenty of action. We got Loretta Lenz. And then when the series returns in Unadilla, we got some big names that are gonna be entering the series. And this is kind of a product of the super duper effect. But I'm getting to all that and more. Thank you to everyone who subscribed and also resubscribed after YouTube unsubscribed them. But either way, I appreciate it. And also thank you so much to those who've joined the memberships. That's how I'm planning on taking this to the next level. Everyone's, if you join a membership, it's $2.99 a month and it's helping me grow this thing to a level where I can compete with these bigger media outlets. So thank you guys for that. I appreciate it more than you know. Let's get into this guys. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers. I say, that's the bad guy. So this one was weird. And I've heard this, and we've been hearing rumblings of it all year. Zach Osborne wants to make a comeback. I'm not the biggest Zach Osborne fan. In fact, I really don't like this guy. And I'll tell you exactly why. Back in the day, I was a WPS rep. He rode for Fly. I wrote an article. This is after what he did in the Supercross, which I commended him on that. I defended him on that. In the first turn, Savachi accidentally took out a bunch of guys. One of them was Zach Osborne. And I made the joke that it was unintentional bad karma. That Savachi was probably like, sorry, sorry, sorry. He looked at Osborne and went, not sorry. He absolutely flipped out over me writing that as if he has any control over it. Threatened me with no more interviews. And when I laughed, that even made him more mad. He ended up contacting Fly. So I got contacted from my day job at the time. I wasn't doing as much media and it put me in a real jam. So yeah, for a guy to go after me at that level for saying he was a victim of unintentional bad karma, yeah, that's a scumbag move in my opinion. I also know a lot about the supplements that he's used throughout his career. So for him to act like he's this, you know, family man, all clean, you know, listen, this guy, he'll put anything in his system to go faster. And like I said, I don't care when guys do that, but I don't like when they pretend like they're this high and mighty, I would never do that type of guy when they do that stuff. Now him coming back, I mean, honestly, what's he gonna do? He'll probably, I don't know, he could probably get a top 10, I mean, he was a former champion. The dude was pretty good. I mean, I'm not gonna take away from what he did on the bike, but I don't see him doing any better than what Brock Tickle did. Brock Tickle at least rides all the time at a high level testing the Kawasaki's. And for him to go out there and have the performance he did, I don't see Osborne doing much better. And he'll be on a Club MX 450 filling in for Marchbanks, who they let go, which I just, I really don't like that move. I don't think Osborne's a guy that I want around my younger kids. He's not a good person. For those who know him on a personal level, it's crazy how many people, him and Ricky Carmichael are probably two of the biggest scumbags in the sport when it comes to screwing people over and being all about themselves. And I think what Zach figured out is he's not as big a deal as he thought he was. He drank his own Kool-Aid when he was winning championships and everyone was kissing his butt. And they're like, oh yeah, if you retire, you could be a broadcaster. Oh, turns out he might've been the worst broadcaster ever. I mean, he looked like a, I mean, he looked like a hostage victim the way he was speaking. And you know, it was like blink if you're safe. It, it was, it was one of the worst. Typically Feld gives former champions and race winners and people at a high level like Zach Osborne, a pretty long rope. They pulled the plug after two rounds with Zach Osborne. It was that embarrassing. And I, I do go back to laughing when he said that he wouldn't do any more interviews with me as if his interviews did anything for me. I don't know if he knows this or not, but he can't speak very well. He sucks. And to be egotistical enough as a writer to say, oh, well, I won't do interviews with that guy. Just so writers know, interviews are for you, not for the media outlet. You get an opportunity to promote you and your brand to the world. It's backwards the way that he was thinking of it. He should be honored to do any media, period because media helps him build his brand. For him to pick and choose the media outlets that he wants to work with, hey, that's him cutting his own throat. So to see him possibly link up with Club MX, who I have a lot of respect for, disappoints me. I wouldn't let him and his cancerous attitudes towards others. I wouldn't want him around those kids. They've got a really good thing going on, but there is some dissension amongst the Club MX ranks. There's attitude issues around them. Uh, Jeremy Martin leaving, it wasn't all roses. That might have soiled a lot of opinions towards club, but they need to just chop those and stop going with these old retreads. Just park the bike, um, put, put a young kid on it, put someone else on it, but do not let Zach Osborne infiltrate your pits. And typically I love when guys make a comeback and I like to see the older racers 
decide to get that fire and come back out again, but there's a special place in my heart for that scumbag, and I just can't actually cheer for his act at all. I hope if he does go out there, I would never wish injury on anyone, but I want him to suck real bad. If you haven't checked out the Coach Rob Show, if you're a vet racer and you wanna know how to recover, how to prepare, check it out. Toolman Dan and Coach Rob do a vet podcast dedicated to riders at an advanced age continuing the sport. So check that out. Coach Rob podcast or Coach Rob on YouTube. Epic Garage Designs. Travis Ogburn has some of the coolest designs for your garage. Check them out. EpicGarageDesigns.com. Check out the Instagram on Epic Garage. Travis is always posting pictures of really cool projects that they've done. And these are just some of the things they can do for you. So check them out. So we finally have an Eli Tomac sighting. That's what this guy does. He kind of disappears when he has his injuries and he's not a guy that will rush back, but he did show a picture of his hand and said he's hoping to be back at Bud's Creek. Now on any other year, we wouldn't see Tomac again, but with this SMX thing, it's giving him an incentive to get back out there. But I don't expect him to be back at Bud's Creek or at Ironman. I really think he'll wait until SMX. One thing that Tomac has done in his career, and he's been consistent on this, he totally heals before he comes back from an injury. He never comes back early and risks re-injuring it. And maybe that's one of the reasons he's been as healthy as he has is because he doesn't do that. And that's one of the risks. If you come back too early, your body starts compensating and you possibly get another injury or you re-injure what was already hurt. Tomac has been very, very good about that. So I don't know if we'll see him at Bud's Creek. If we do, he'll be 100% because he doesn't push it. And I think that's a good thing. Cooper Webb, another guy that I don't think we'd see this year if it wasn't for SMX, is going to be back. And I believe he'll be back next round at Unadilla. He's riding, looks good, looks happy. Get those gate drops in before SMX. And that's where I think he's really shooting for. I don't think he cares too much about these last three outdoors, but Cooper Webb wants to be ready, dialed in. These guys really want that SMX championship. They want to run that plate all next year. That's a big honor for Jet and Hayden Deegan both to have those on their bikes this year, it looked pretty cool. Check out Ride Strap, guys. Get your goggles, get your shirts. Just a really great company that has helped me a lot. Hit up ridestrap.com. If you're shipping anything, using a truck, hit up Precision Transport, pretransport.com. A family owned motorcycle loving company that will get your product there in a timely manner at a reasonable price, pretransport.com. And we're on the verge of the big Loretta Lens race. And I love watching the amateurs. The racer TV coverage of this race is awesome. I wish they had this when I was a kid. I mean, you can watch almost every single moto from Loretta's. We get to find out who these kids are. And I don't watch a lot of the amateur events, but I watch as much of Loretta's as I can. Here's a few guys that I'm watching and I really wanna see how they do. Drew Adams. Drew Adams pretty much has to go there and win. There's really no other expectations. I don't think if he wins or loses, I don't think it's gonna make or break him because he's been so good in Supercross Futures and the Combine. But don't get me wrong. If this is his year. He wants to get that Horizon Award and just continue the tradition of going right up. Maybe Mitch can get a, a, a real prospect who's not burned out like the other ones that Kawasaki has fed him. A kid who really caught my eye a couple years ago, Liam Olaf. That's Joe Olaf's son. This kid's tough as nails. I want to see he's riding in the pro class. I want to see if Liam can kind of step up and become a guy who can battle right there with Drew Adams and make that leap. He's a, a year or two younger, I believe, but I have to double check. Liam is somebody I'm watching pretty close. And then in the WMX, unfortunately, my friend Sophia Phelps is not racing. She's focusing on school and some other stuff. We will have Kaylee Stallings and Jordan Jarvis. These two women have been battling in the outdoor series, the Women's MX Championship. Jordan Jarvis is fast. She is qualified for outdoor nationals. So for Kaylee Stallings to be beating her, that just shows you the level that they're racing at. And I'm excited to see which one of these girls comes out on top. Then there's the 250B and Schoolboy, the other kind of premier class that the factories all look at. Logan Best is still in there. I feel like he has been hanging around in the lower levels of amateurs for a long time. It is... It is time to do something or maybe move on or at least turn pro and try and see if he can develop something. Logan Best needs to win and he needs to win in dominant fashion to really restart his career. He had a whole bunch of momentum and it just, it's just faded. Uh, he has switched teams, switched trainers. I don't think any of that stuff helped him. I think it actually hurt him. Aiden Kiefer, Chris Kiefer's son. This kid is awesome. I really love the way that Chris Kiefer has brought him up slowly, teaching him you know, how to live life, but he's also a damn good rider. And Aiden could very well make that jump and end up becoming a top pro in this sport. 
He has a lot of skills. And if he doesn't make it as a top pro, he's got plenty of other options. Aiden Kiefer just might be that good. You know, maybe this is the year he breaks out. And then in the super mini class, Nick Way's kid, Vincent Way. This kid is for real. As far as the mini riders go, this is the only can't miss prospect that I've seen. But I'm excited to see all this and more. And who comes out of the woodwork that I haven't even talked about. Because guaranteed, one thing about Loretta Lynn's is we find out about some people that we didn't know about. Thanks, guys. I appreciate everything, especially you members. You guys have, you're making this happen for me and I appreciate it.